Hello everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to your favorite and India's most affordable learning platform, Physicswala. So in the last session of thermal properties of matter, so where we discussed so the emissive power and the absorptive power concept, right? Chalo. So in today's session of thermal properties of matter, so we the lecture number 7, so we are going to focus on the Wien's displacement law important and the Stephen's law and if time permits we'll go for the Newton's law of cooling as well so if not we'll do it in the next session okay so as usual I just need your attention for the next one hour guys just be with me avoid all the disturbances around you for the next one hour and at the end of the lecture it's a very important to prepare your own short notes and the competitive examinations are around so you guys have to gear up your preparation so practice more previous year questions complete the backlogs so prepare your own short notes and revise it daily and attempt more mock tests so if you are in class 12th or dropper so do this do these things on a daily basis okay so from here every minute counts okay so you guys have to uh, leave other things for now so you'll get time to enjoy after the examinations so you can do that at that time but so concentrate on studies for this period because the competition is very high you guys know that right Chalo. so with very high positive energy let's get into the today's topic guys so where so the first let's see the concept of color of an object see if you take any body let me consider this is an object so let's say this object is appearing as a uh, red color let's say this object is of red color it's a red color object hope this color is visible consider let's say this is a red color object so why this object appears to be red first of all why this object appears to be red why not other color so because see on every body so there will be some radiations falling so which we call it as white light so right white light contains seven colors you know this right you studied it in the grade 10th so white light contains seven colors vgr yes so the white light it contains seven colors so vgr done chalo so now out of these seven colors so why only this object is appearing red color if white light is falling on the body so why only red color because so this body radiates so that means this body reflects the red color so this body reflects red color what about remaining color sir reflects red color so then what about remaining sir so it absorbs the remaining colors so the body absorbs remaining colors the body absorbs remaining colors so here what are all the remaining colors so whatever that are there in the vgr so the body is appearing red means so the body is reflecting red and remaining colors which are falling on it it is absorbing understood this point everyone Chalo. so like that any color so let's suppose this is appearing black so what does that mean so we'll talk about the black later or some other body which is appearing green let's say so then we can say that so it's absorbing all the colors except green so the green is reflecting so that's okay so that means see here one more point so the maximum absorptive power so we the maximum absorptive power is for which color now understand this concept guys so just focus here so the maximum absorptive power so which colors it is absorbing so white color minus minus so uh, red the white minus red so these colors it is absorbing maximum absorptive power is white minus red yes or no because it is reflecting red right so that's why white minus red is a maximum absorptive power so let's suppose if i heat this body 
understand the concepts so let's go slow only this lecture because we are going to discuss n number of questions n number of theory concepts so we'll understand step by step so it's going to be a bit lengthy lecture so just be with me okay Chalo. so this object is heated so to some temperature let's say so this object is heated heated to high temperature now so what will be the color of the object it's a red body so now you heat it to some high temperature so now what will be the color of the object so here we can say that so for any body for which it is a good absorbent so it is a good emitter also for the same uh, wavelength or for the same color so i can say that maximum absorptive power is for white minus red so the same will reflect when we heat it the emissive power is also more the emiss emissive power or it is a good emitter it is a good emitter of per uh, let's write this way so for so white minus white minus red yes so what is this white minus red i'll tell so in the next slide so just understand the concept so first of all why the object appears to be red in color because out of all the colors which are falling that is white light falling on the body so it's absorbing all the colors and reflecting the red color so that's why it appear, appears to be red so now the maximum absorptive power is for white minus red and if you heat this body to some high temperature so it will reflect which color it will uh, it will appear in which color so for whichever it is a good absorber so the same is for the good emitter yes or no? yesterday we studied in the kitchoff's laws a good absorber is a good emitter as well right so it's a good emitter for white minus red so now what is this white minus red color sir so let's understand this cycle here so let's understand this one Okay, chal. So here, V, B, G, Y, O, R. Remember this cycle. So V, except uh, indigo, write the remaining. Okay, chal. So now let me tell you. So the, let's say, if I write, so white minus red. If I say white minus red. So for the red opposite, so which color is there? For the red opposite, we have green. So the white minus red is green. Okay. Similarly, so if I say white minus yellow, so yellow opposite, white minus, if I say yellow. So then, so for yellow opposite, it's a violet. Done. Chalo. So then, so white minus, so let's say blue. So which gives orange are white minus orange so which you give blue so just you have to subtract white minus violet yellow white minus violet so where is that mm. so white minus violet you can write yellow so then similarly white minus blue orange or white minus orange blue so this part you guys should remember so now come to the previous slide again so this body is absorbed the maximum absorptive power is there for white minus red white minus red means so the green so here when you heat this body it appears to be when you heat this body it appears to be green in color this becomes green white minus red is nothing but so again green understood guys this part everyone so i just just took your 10 minutes time to make you understand hope you guys understood this concept so let me take a simple question so a yellow object is heated to high temperature will appear to be so first it is understand the concept so it's a yellow object why it is yellow in color let's say so the white light is falling on the object All right Chalo. so it's appearing yellow so what does that mean let's say this body is yellow 
so which means it is reflecting yellow color it reflects yellow color and reflects yellow color chalo so and it absorbs which colors it absorbs which colors tell me first so it absorbs all remaining colors all remaining colors right chalo so now so it is a uh, maximum absorptive power is for maximum absorptive power is for so white minus yellow white minus yellow so you know what is white minus yellow so which is nothing but the orange so white minus yellow sorry violet so white minus yellow is nothing but the violet so this becomes violet in color so that means this is a good maximum absorptive power is there for the violet so then when you heat this body when you heat this body what happens it appears to be violet in color that's it so it appears to be violet in color yes so at heated to high temperature just the theory part right along with me heated to high temperature so done guys everyone clear with this so chalo so let's say so why does a body appears black you guys tell me why does a body appears black so let's say so the white light is falling on the body so it's appearing black in color means so it absorbs all the colors it's a good absorbent so it is it absorbs all colors falling on it falling on it so a black body a black object so which is a good absorber right you guys know that so a black body or a black object so which is a good absorber done it's a good absorber done huh? clear everyone understood so why does a uh, body appears uh, white if i say why does a body appears white so because it reflects all the colors it's a poor absorbent a white body is a poor absorbent it reflects all the colors so that's why it appears to be white so that's it so why does a body appears white so because so the white light is falling so it reflects complete white light reflects complete white light so it absorbs none so it absorbs none hope you guys are understanding the concept now so it absorbs none so it's a poor absorbent we can say so the white body is a poor absorbent done clear everyone chalo so the basics are done clear chalo so let's move further so we have one question so the question number 4 as compared to the person with white skin so the person with black skin will experience see here so a black body is a good absorbent and a good emitter yes sir no so that's what i said so a black body is a good absorber it's a good absorbent and as well as good emitter so you have studied the krichoff's law in the last session a good absorber is a good emitter so it's a good emitter as well so see a person with a black skin and a person with a white skin so will experience so more heat less more cold less heat more cold more heat less cold less heat less cold see in the winter <coughs> let's say 
so the outside temperature will be less so the body's temperature will be more yes or no the surrounding temperature will be so very less the body's temperature will be more so what happens so the heat will be radiated from the body so that's why so the person feels more cold with the black skin yes and in the summer outside temperature will be more and body's temperature will be less so the person with the uh, black skin so he is black object is a good good emitter also and good, good absorber also so it absorbs more heat from the surroundings in the summer season so that's why he feels more heat so in the winter he feels more cold and in the summer he feels more heat so that's why so he will experience more heat more cold option 2 is a correct answer okay guys understood chalo so we have one more question so the question number 5 yes or no so 4 4 so let's make it 5 so two thermometers a and b are exposed in sunlight fine so the wall of a is painted black fine so but that of b is not painted so the correct statement regarding this e case is temperature of a will rise faster than b but the final temperature will be same in both so both and both a and b show equal rise in beginning no because a is painted black so which is a good absorber so when it is ex exposed to the sunlight so it absorbs more heat in the starting compared to the so the b thermometer because it is the a1 is painted black so but finally they both show the same temperature why the thermometer work is to indicate the final temperature but the a will raise suddenly in the starting because it is painted with black b raises slowly but at the end so the both the function is to indicate the temperature so the final temperature will be same in both so i can put so the option 1 temperature of a will raise faster than b but final temperature will be same in both clear so and then temperature of a will remain more than b so no so temperature of b will raise faster no so option a1 is a correct answer here done guys cha so now let's go for the wien's displacement law so carefully understand so it is a let's understand this wien's displacement law is for the black body first thing the wien's displacement law and we are going to study the stephen's law also so that is also for the black body only okay chalo so let's say let's write the graph let's understand through graph so this is a intensity of radiation this is the intensity of radiation so what is the intensity of radiation in the last class we have studied so which is nothing but the energy or the heat radiated per unit area per unit time so this is the intensity of radiation which is also so the msu power e which is also the msu power e right and then so let me take the wavelength now at some particular temperature so if we draw the intensity of radiation versus the wavelength curve so it practical observations so it has so let's say this is the graph so for a particular wavelength so the particular wavelength so the intensity of radiation will be maximum so this is called the lambda maximum this is not the maximum wavelength this is not the maximum wavelength so for this wavelength so the intensity of radiation is more let's say so at 100 nanometers so we have so some 10 radiations okay and some 200 nanometers so we have let's say some 15 radiations and for 300 nanometers so let's say so some 12 radiations now so for which wavelength so the intensity of radiation is more for the 200 nanometers the intensity of radiation is 15 yes or no so that's not the maximum wavelength right 200 is not the maximum wavelength 300 is the maximum wavelength but for that particular wavelength lambda max for that particular wavelength so where the intensity of radiation will be maximum so lambda max is a write down so lambda max is the radiation or the wavelength for which 
wavelength for which the intensity of radiation is maximum for which so the intensity of radiation the intensity of radiation is maximum so understood this term so let's say this is at the some temperature t1 now so if i increase the temperature if i further increase the temperature so then it is observed that the maximum intensity shifts towards a shorter wavelength so the maximum intensity let's say here so this is the maximum intensity this is for the first one t1 temperature so let's say this is a t2 temperature so the maximum radiation of intensity shifts to the shorter wavelength shifts to the shorter wavelength and then i increase the temperature so to further t3 so then i observed that so this graph came out to be so the this is a maximum so this is lambda max for the temperature t3 so i can write as the temperature increases so i'll write here as the temperature increases the maximum intensity of radiation the maximum intensity of radiation shifts towards shifts towards shorter wavelength shifts towards shorter wavelengths understood this part everyone chal so this is a wien's displacement law so this is what the wien's displacement law as the temperature increases so the intensity of maximum radiation or the intensity of radiation shifts towards the shorter wavelength so that means the lambda maximum is inversely proportional to the time so that's what he gave just write down the theory part so then i'll go for the uh, mathematical part hope you guys understood the theory part done check so now i can write here <coughs> so let me write it in the next slide so the temperature let's say t3 is greater than t2 is greater than t1 the temperature t3 is greater than let's say this is a t3 so t3 is greater than t2 is greater than t1 so then the lambda max for the t1 will be greater so then the lambda max for the t2 is greater than so the lambda max for the t3 understood so from here so he gave that so the lambda max is inversely proportional to the temperature so the lambda max is inversely proportional to the temperature clear or the temperature is inversely proportional to lambda max whatever it is so then he gave the relation this way so then we can write um, not is equals to so put the proportionality symbol so and then take out the proportionality symbol and put the constant so that is b by t so which is nothing but so the lambda max into so that t temperature so is equals to so b so where this b is called wien's constant so this is the wien's constant so the lambda max the lambda into the temperature it remains a constant which is equals to so the wien's constant okay so what is this wien's constant value so this b is given as so 3.898 into 10 to the power 3 so what are the units so the lambda meters so temperature kelvin right so meter kelvin so that's it done so can you guys write the dimensional formula for that can you guys write the dimensional formula for that so the lambda max is inversely proportional to 
t right so lambda max is equals to b by t so lambda max into t is equals to b so where b is the wins constant so b value sorry not 3 2 2 point so 2.898 into 10 to the power 3 so meter kelvin so can you guys write the dimensional formula So the dimensions of B so can you guys take it as a homework simple I wrote the units right there done sure. so one more thing here you guys remember that so the lambda max into take it as a homework so the lambda max into so the temperature so should be constant so based on this so the questions might be framed like this so the lambda 1 t1 is equals to lambda 2 into t2 so lambda 1 means so the lambda 1 maximum is equals to lambda 2 maximum done everyone so understood the winds displacement law and one more thing so the area under the curve so i'll write here so the area under the curve for which one as the temperature increases so the area under the curve is also increasing so I can write, so I'm not drawing the diagram again. So as the temperature increases, as the temperature increases, so the area under curve, area under, so curve increases. So here I can write like, so the temperature T3 is greater than the temperature t2 is greater than temperature t1 yes and then we have seen so the lambda max for the temperature t1 is greater than the lambda max for the temperature t2 is greater than so the lambda max for the temperature t3 right and then so which is also a3 is greater than a2 is greater than a1 that's it a3 is greater than A2 is greater than A1. So the area under the curve also increases with the temperature. Done? Clear everyone? Chal. So just look at this theory part. We'll go for the questions. So this is important. Based on this, we are going to solve the numericals. Done? So just have a look at that one. So you guys have to write the dimensional formula, pass the video and do it now. Okay? Chal. Chal. Done? Chal. Hmm. So A3 greater than A2 greater than A1 means, so we can say, so the overall radiation increases. Write down that. As the temperature increases, so the overall radiation increases. Done? Chal. So let's see the questions. So the Wien's displacement law expresses the relation between wavelength corresponding to maximum energy and temperature. So actually maximum intensity and temperature. So radiation energy and wavelength, radio temperature and wavelength. So color of light and temperature. No. So the first one is the appropriate one. It should be actually maximum intensity, but you can choose energy also. Wavelength corresponding to maximum energy and temperature. Option one. More relatable op uh, option is the first one only. Chalo. So the lambda m denotes a wavelength at which so the radioactive emission for a from a black body at a temperature. So Tk is maximum. So Tk is maximum. So the lambda m the lambda max is inversely proportional to the temperature yes or no so i can write like so the lambda max is directly proportional to t to the power minus one so direct so option four is a correct done guys understood sure. so let's move further so we got one more question so what's the question says here a black body has maximum wavelength lambda m at a temperature 2000 Kelvin so its corresponding wavelength at temperature 3000 Kelvin 
so how to solve this kind of question so the lambda m it is maximum for a black body has maximum wavelength lambda m so at 2000 kelvin okay so then at 3000 kelvin so what is the corresponding maximum wavelength so let it be so the lambda dash okay so we have to find this lambda dash so we know that from wien's displacement law we have studied so the lambda max into the temperature should be constant right so from here so i can write so the lambda max for the one into the t1 is equals to the lambda max 2 into so the temperature t2 okay so the lambda max for the first one is lambda m into at which temperature it is 2000 kelvin right so always take the temperature in kelvin in wien's displacement law and in the stephens law remember so take the temperature in kelvin only even if they give in cent uh, centigrade convert it to kelvin okay so which is equals to so which is equals to so i can write so let the uh, lambda max for the second one is lambda dash we assumed so into so at which temperature 3000 so now i need the lambda dash so the lambda dash is equals to so lambda m into 2000 by so bring this 3000 to this side so by 3000 so 20 zeros 30 zeros gets cancel so the lambda dash is equals to 2 by 3 lambda m done clear so 2 by 3 lambda m option 2 is a correct answer simple concepts guys okay chalo so we got one more question so try this question so what's the question says a black body at 1227 degree centigrade converted to kelvin emits radiation with a maximum intensity at a wavelength so 5000 angstrom if the temperature of the body is increased by 1000 degree centigrade so the maximum intensity will be observed at which wavelength so simple concept again so just go for the basics so let's say the temperature t1 which is 1227 degree centigrade so convert it to kelvin so 1227 plus 273 right so this comes out to be 1200 200 uh, 1400 1400 plus uh, this is uh, 100 1500 kelvin done so and then so let the lambda maximum for the first one lambda 1 which is equals to 5000 angstrom right so then the temperature is increased by 1000 degree centigrade so which is nothing but so the temperature t2 so will become so increase 1000 so it's actually we can write so 2227 degree centigrade initially it is 1227 so increased by 1000 so that's why 2227 right so plus convert it to centigrade uh, sorry kelvin plus 273 so 2400 plus 100 which is 2500 kelvin or else you can directly add 1000 kelvin for this 1 degree centigrade is equals to 1 kelvin right so you can add it so then we have to find what is lambda 2 so done so we know that lambda 1 into t1 is equals to lambda 2 into t2 so we have to find lambda 2 so lambda 1 is what 5000 into so t1 1500 which is equals to lambda 2 so which is we have to calculate t2 so 2500 that's it so here 2500 one time so 2500 two times so the lambda 2 will be equals to 1500 into 2 so which is 3000 angstroms so 3000 angstroms is a correct answer option 1 then guys clear chal so now the color of radiation and the temperature so how the temperature affects so the color of radiation so we have different colors for a object at different temperatures yes or no so let's say we know the different vgr so down the line so the lambda increases down the line so the lambda increases 
yes understand the concept carefully so as the lambda increases we know that the lambda is inversely proportional to the temperature according to the wien's displacement law so we have studied from the wien's displacement law so the temperature is inversely proportional to the maximum wavelength or the wavelength so now i can say that as the temperature as the lambda increases down so the temperature decreases down the line so the temperature decreases or else so the temperature will be more for the violet and then so the temperature will be less for the red so let me explain you with an example so let's consider this object so consider let's suppose this object is initially the red in color this is a red in color the red color object so this is this object is at normal temperature so let's say some low temperature now now it is heated to some other temperature it is heated to some other temperature suddenly the body's uh, temperature will not increase to very high right so it will raise to some temperature okay some moderate temperature then so the red color object as the temperature increased as the temperature increased or we can say so okay so as the temperature increased what happens to its wavelength the temperature increased so the wavelength decreases so the temperature increased so the wavelength decreases so the red has a more wavelength so when you increase the temperature so its wavelength changes to either orange or yellow so let's say it has become yellow now let's say so this has become yellow so that means upon heating so the red color object which has which is becoming yellow color yes so now you supplied more heat so it is heated for the the object is heated for the so then it's raised to some high temperature so let's say some high temperature the body raised to some high temperature so temperature still increased from here to here the temperature increased so then temperature increased means lambda decrease so now we are here so temperature is still increased so temperature has reached to some this point so now the lambda will decrease further so the lambda will become so consider the violet the object appears to be violet now now let's say so we supplied more heat heated strongly so then the object reached to some very high temperature so very high temperature very very high temperature so then temperature further we are here the temperature so temperature further increased what happens to lambda it should decrease so the temperature increased so the object should become so the violet sorry here it is blue this is let's say blue okay so now it will become so violet so this will become the complete violet in color so understanding so that means as the temperature increases so we can say the wavelength decreases so that's the only logic you have to catch here so that's a color of radiation and temperature so what like if we increase the temperature of a body so how it colors or how its radiation changes because of radiation only we are able to observe the colors right so that's what we discussed in the starting of the class then chalo hope you guys understood now so we got the questions so try these questions now color of shining bright shining bright star is an indication of its distance from the earth size temperature obviously the temperature if the temperature is more so the color will change right if the temperature is more or less its color changes the wavelength changes lambda depends on the temperature so the lambda is inversely proportional to the temperature so any object it's reflecting some colors means so it depends on its temperature and it depends on the starting we discussed right what color it is reflecting 
सो टाइप ऑफ मेटेरियल डन चलो सो वी हैव ए लेंथी क्वेश्चन सो बट द इजी वन सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द थियरी पार्ट एंड ऑब्जर्विंग ए लाइट फ्रॉम थ्री डिफरेंट स्टार्स पी क्यू आर इट वॉज फाउंड दट द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ वायलेट कलर इज मैक्सिमम इन द स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ पी सो द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ ग्रीन कलर इज मैक्सिमम इन द स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ आर ओके सो द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ सो फॉर द पी इन द स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ पी विच कलर वायलेट कलर सो इन द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ इन द आर green color i let me underline r green color so in the it is found that intensity of violet color is maximum in the p okay fine so and the intensity of color is maximum in the spectrum of q which color red color is maximum in the spectrum of q so if tp tq tr are the respective temperature of absolute temperatures of p q r so then it can be concluded from the above so okay see here first there are three colors what are they violet let's write this way so green and then uh, oh, 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 oh red right so this is for the violet is for the p and then green is for the r and then red is for the q right so we can say that so the lambda of q is greater than so the lambda of r is greater than lambda of p so now they are asking the temperatures so the temperatures will be reversed so the temperature of q less than the temperature of r less than the temperature of p r we can write so the temperature of p will be more so the temperature of r so then the temperature of q so temperature of p greater than temperature of r greater than temperature of q so the simple logic so the question is lengthy but the answer is very really simple then clear everyone chal so let's move further so we got one more question a piece of iron is heated in a flame so it first becomes dull red then becomes reddish yellow and finally turns white hot so the correct explanation for the observation of possible by using so which one so the wien's displacement law so the lambda is inversely proportional to the temperature as the temperature changes its wavelength so the color of radiation changes right cha simple logic so now let's go for the so stephens boltzmann law or which is also called the stephens law see stephen and boltzmann combinedly they made this state uh, statement and they gave the uh, formula so that's why it's called stephens boltzmann law or so simply we call it as stephens law as well okay so just a minute guys okay so what this is let's see for the perfectly black body so then we'll go for so the remaining done chal so here for a perfectly black body the intensity of radiation is directly proportional to t to the power 4 so let me write that again here the intensity of radiation the intensity of radiation is directly proportional to t to the power 4 okay chal so what is intensity of radiation we can write so which is so the heat radiated per unit area per unit time s yes. so which is directly proportional to t to the power 4 so from here you can also write so the q is directly proportional to so a into so t to the power 4 into t so now so the q is equals to take out the proportional symbol and put the proportional constant as sigma so into a into t to the power 4 into t so this is a stephens law formula okay clear guys so here i can write so this sigma is called the stephens constant so the sigma is called the stephens constant and the t is a temperature capital t is a temperature so this must be taken in kelvin always so take this value in kelvin then chal so and area is a a is a surface area of the black body surface area of black body so this temperature is also for a given temperature of black body see here i clearly mentioned 
for a perfectly black body we are talking about for a perfectly black body so it's a temperature of black body understood this part everyone chal so and small t is the time and q is the heat radiated so q is a heat radiated or the energy radiated so t is a time done chalo so note this down everyone note this part first done so let me go for the next slide so the q is equals to we have got sigma a t to the power 4 into t so where the sigma we named it as stefan's constant not v so they only named it so it has a stefan's constant right chal so this stefan constant has a value so 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 so approximately it is taken as sometimes 6 so 5.87 or 5.67 so approximately sometimes it's taken as 6 into 10 to the power minus 8 so now my question is what are the units of stefan's constants units of sigma very important so units and measurement chapter we already did this so what are the dimensions of sigma you have to write let's first find what are the units so same form i am writing so q is equals to sigma a t to the power 4 into t so now if you need sigma so let's write q by a into t to the power 4 into t chalo so now the units i can write so this is joule right by area meter square and then so temperature kelvin to the power 4 so t second this is a unit r so more oftenly we write it as so the joule per second is a watt so joule per second is nothing but the watt so watt meter square kelvin to the power 4 or so in the question they might give like this so watt meter to the power minus 2 kelvin to the power minus 4 done so all are the units of the sigma so you guys have to write so as a homework write the dimensional formula already we did it in the units and dimensions chapter so write so the dimensional formula of it done so you can you guys can pass the video now and do it so I, if you want i'll wait for just 30 seconds done done Ch next see the same formula you can also write in terms of the rate of heat radiated so in terms of rate of heat radiated so the rate of heat radiated is nothing but the power yes or no the rate of heat radiated is nothing but the power radiated so the power radiated so now i can write so the power is equals to so which is dq by dt so which is nothing but here so what is dq by dt we know the q is equals to so q is equals to sigma a t to the power 4 into t so let's bring this t to this side q by t is equals to sigma a t to the power 4 done so that's what i am writing sigma a t to the power 4 so this is a power radiated so what is this one this is a power radiated understood guys everyone so what are the units of the power radiated you know watt done so the units are watt so denoted by w clear this part everyone so just make a note of it so in terms of power radiated and uh, so this is a formula you have to remember and then this part so this is a formula you have to remember so here one more important thing so you can see that so the heat radiated or the power 
it is directly proportional to t to the power 4. So you can observe that. So the power is directly proportional to t to the power 4. So while solving the numericals, so let's say at some temperature, the power radiated is given and at some other temperature, if we have to calculate what is the power radiated. So then you can easily use the relation P1 by P2 is equals to T1 to the power 4 by the T2 to the power 4. Done everyone. So and you can also establish one more relation. So what is that? So the power is directly proportional to T to the power 4. So now what is the relation between uh, temperature and lambda? So I can write 1 by lambda to the power 4. We can do that also, right? Temperature is inversely proportional to lambda. Or lambda is inversely proportional to temperature. So then t to the power 4 will be inversely proportional to 1 by lambda to the power 4. Done. So all these are important while doing the numericals. Clear? Chalo. So let's move further. So we'll solve the questions. Hope you guys understood everything here. Chalo. So for any other body, so we have seen for a perfectly black body, for a perfectly black body, so we have seen, so the Q is equals to sigma A T to the power 4 into T, right? So now for any other body, so the emissivity comes to the role. For any other body except black bodies, for any other body, so we can write, so the Q is equals to, I can write, so E into sigma into A T to the power 4 into T. Or in terms of the power radiated, if you have to write, so the power P is equals to E into sigma into A into T to the power 4. So what is this E, sir? E is the emissivity, not emissive power. Emissive power is different, emissivity is different. Okay, so the small e is a emissivity. So for a perfectly black body, this emissivity e is equals to 1 for a perfectly black body. So if they say for any other body, so they will mention its emissivity. Let's say 0 0.9 or 0 0.6 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.7. So the emissivity changes from one body to another body. How much a body can emit depends. So a black body can emit 100%. But other bodies can emit only to certain range. Right? Done? Clear this part? Clear, clear, clear? Everyone? Chala. Good. So now, so let's uh, solve these questions. The units of Stephen constant, sigma. So again, I will do for you. Do along with me. So you can go from power formula. So better use the power formula. So P is equals to sigma a t to the power 4. So now sigma is equals to p by a into t to the power 4. So now units will be power watt by area meter square temperature kelvin to the power 4. Right. So which I can write it as so watt meter to the power minus 2 k to the power minus 4. Done. So which is nothing but Watt meter to the power minus 2, k to the power minus 4. Option 3 is the correct answer. So write the dimensional formula also. Okay now, clear. So the next, we have one more question. What's the question says here? So a, a black body is at a temperature of 500 Kelvin. They clearly mention it's a black body. If they do not mention the black body, so don't use the direct formula of power radiated or the heat radiated. So Q is equals to sigma A T to the power 4 into T. No. If it is some other body, you have to mention its emissivity small e as well. Here clearly they mentioned black body. So at a temperature 500 Kelvin, so it emits energy at a rate which is proportional to. It emits rate which is proportional to. See here, emits energy at a rate. Energy at a rate means energy per time, heat energy per time. So which is nothing but which is nothing but power they are saying. So we know that power is equals to sigma a t to the power 4. So where the power is directly proportional to t to the power 4. Dana? Chala. So here 
the temperature is mentioned in the question so the power is directly proportional to temperature is 500 kelvin so 500 t to the power 4 so one more important observation that you have to make is whether it's given in kelvin or centigrade okay so if it is degree centigrade you should convert it to kelvin first okay now so in the formula also i gave where here so it's a temperature of the black body so should be taken in kelvin compulsory kelvin so if it is some other body so temperature of that particular body in kelvin only done chalo so next we have so this is done so option a is the correct answer one option one is the correct answer chalo so let's go for the next question a black body is at 727 degree centigrade it emits energy at a rate which is proportional to yeah so now understand so don't put the option option 3 directly so the power energy at a rate energy at a rate means power so power is equals to sigma a t to the power 4 so power is directly proportional to t to the power 4 most of the students what they do is so they generally see the temperature power is directly proportional to t to the power 4 so 720 to the power 4 they write but it is given in kel uh, degree centigrade convert it to kelvin so power is directly proportional to 727 plus 273 i am converting it to kelvin so power 4 so which is nothing but so 900 100 1000 so 1000 to the power 4 is the correct answer option 1 done clear everyone Chal. so next so let's see the next one if the temperature of the sun is doubled the rate of energy received on earth will increase by a factor of so what they are saying the rate of energy so that means power they are asking so what is doubled the temperature of the sun is doubled so now let's say so here is the sun so when the sun is at the sun is perfectly black body so right so we have studied in the last class so let's suppose the sun is at some temperature t so then the power radiated will be equals to sigma a t to the power 4 now so if the temperature of the sun is doubled this time so let the temperature so what's it 2t so then let the power radiated p dash is equals to how much so that's what they are saying so i'll use this formula p dash by p is equals to so sigma a so the surface area remains same so the stephens constant constant so the temperature let it be t dash by so sigma a the surface area and stephen constant same and the temperature initially t so then i will use p dash by p is equals to so sigma a sigma a cancel t dash is nothing but t dash to the power 4 so t dash is nothing but 2t to the power 4 by t to the power 4 so then i can write so p dash by p is equals to so 2 to the power 4 16 t to the power 4 right 16 t to the power 4 by t to the power 4 so these two gets cancelled so then the p dash will be equals to the new power radiated or the rate of energy is equals to so 16 times of p so how much factor they are saying right so increased by a factor of 16 times option 4 so no need of these much calculations you already know power is directly proportional to t to the power 4 so if the temperature is doubled 2t to the power 4 that's it so 2 to the power 4 means 16 you can directly put the option okay so for the for your understanding i did the calculations clear 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 Chala. so let's move further hope you guys can solve this question can you try this so in the question they said it's a black body a black body at 220 degree centigrade radiates heat at the rate of heat at the rate that means power is given 7 calorie per centimeter square second so then that at a temperature 727 degree centigrade the rate of heat radiated in the same units so no need to convert the units here so will be see here simple first let's say this is a black body so it is at 220 degree centigrade now so what's the power radiated given so the power radiated is 7 calorie per centimeter square second done so now if i 
the same body at a temperature at which temperature so let's say so the same body at different temperature which is 727 degree centigrade so now the power radiated let it be p dash is equals to how much so they did not talk about the surface area and stephen's constant however it is constant so i can write so if you want you can write the formula so the p dash by p is equals to so i can write sigma a let's write the temperature t dash here so the t dash to the power 4 by so originally the temperature t let it be t so let it be some temperature t dash so t to the power 4 so sigma a sigma a cancel so the p dash we have to calculate by p so which is equals to t dash to the power 4 by t to the power 4 right so then but here the temperatures are given in centigrade so what you guys do is convert it to kelvin so the t temperature is 227 degree centigrade so then it's going to be 227 plus 273 227 plus 273 so which is 500 kelvin done shall so then here the t, t dash temperature will be 727 plus 273 so which is 1000 kelvin hope you guys are understanding hope i'm not teaching for myself right Stella. so let's do the calculations now do the simple calculations so we got the p dash by p is equals to so what is this one t dash 1000 to the power 4 by uh, this one so t to the power 4 which is 500 to the power 4 so then what we can do here so p dash by p is equals to so let's do one thing 10 to the power 4 10 to the power 4 into so 100 to the power uh, let's do the basic calculations so here what we can do is the calculations so in terms of uh, 16 16 in the sense so let's do one thing so th do this way better so let me write 2 into 500 to the power 4 so 2 to the power 4 into 500 to the power 4 so proceed according to the options so this will become 500 to the power 4 so 500 to the power 4 500 to the power 4 gets cancelled so then p dash by p is equals to 2 to the power 4 which is nothing but 16 so then p dash will be equals to 16 into p so what is p in the given question 7 calorie per centimeter square second so 7 so which is nothing but 112 right so 112 calorie per centimeter square second so in the same units they said so the option will be 112 option 3 is the correct one done now understood Achha. so next we have so one more question so what's the question says the radiant energy from the sun incident normally at the surface area of the earth is 20 calorie per meter kilo calorie per meter square minute so what would be what would have been the radiant energy incident normally on the earth if the sun had a temperature twice the present one so the temperature increased twice so already we did this question see so I'll, gi I'll give it as a homework for you so let's consider so the surface area is not changed right so here let the temperature t so here the temperature t dash which is equals to 2t so the power radiated see here the radiant energy from the sun so incident normally at the surface of the earth is 20 kilo calorie per meter square so which is nothing but power is given so which we can write 20 kilo calorie per meter square minute so then we have to calculate the power here so the p dash is equals to how much so the same concept i can write so which is the p dash by p is equals to so the t dash to the power 4 by t to the power 4 however sigma a sigma a gets cancelled so you know the procedure now so i can write p dash by p is equals to so the temperature is doubled just so it is 2t to the power 4 by t to the power 4 right so then p dash by p is equals to so 2t so 2 to the power 4 into t to the power 4 
by t to the power 4 so t to the power 4 t to the power 4 gets cancelled so the p dash by p is equals to 16 2 to the power 4 is 16 so from here so the p dash is equals to p into 16 so what's the p that is given in the question so 20 so 20 into 16 so which is 320 kilo calories same units maintain the same units so twice of the present one so kilo calorie per meter square minute so same units it is given i guess yes 320 kilo calorie meter square minute so option one is the correct answer guys done clear sure. so try this question next one so try this question easy question so what's the question says if the radius of the star is r and it's and it's acts as a black body so it's a star and it's a black body so what would be the temperature of the star if the rate of energy production is q so the rate of energy production so that means power is given as q see here so power is given here in this question in place of p you have to write q that's it q is not heat radiated the power here in this question power is given as q so there is a star let's say this is a star which is of radius r right so then we know that the power radiated the power radiated formula as so sigma a t to the power 4 so in the question they gave the power radiated is q so let's write q here which is equals to sigma let it be as they mentioned the radius of the star so it's a radius of the star so consider this is a spherical one so they mentioned means consider this is a spherical so the surface area will become 4 pi r square a is the surface area of the black body right so which is 4 pi r square so i'll use 4 pi r square t to the power 4 so now what they are asking actually so what's the temperature so the t to the power 4 is equals to q by sigma 4 pi r square right so then t will be equals to so i can write q by 4 pi r square sigma whole to the power 1 by 4 So Q by 4 pi r square sigma minus 1 by 2, 1 by 4, 4 pi r square up, no. So option 4 is the correct one. Q by 4 pi r square sigma whole to the power 1 by 4. Done. Clear? Chal. Good. So next. A spherical black body with radius 12 centimeters radiates 450 watt power at 500 Kelvin. So if the radius were halved and the temperature were doubled, so the power radiated in the watt would be see here simple question take it as a homework i'll just the basic procedure first so this is a spherical black body so with a radius 12 centimeter so this radius is 12 centimeter initially so done and its power is 450 so the initial power radiated is 450 watts right Chal. so at a temperature 500 kelvin so t is a 500 kelvin then so if the radius were halved and the temperature doubled so radius halved temperature doubled so let the t dash is equals to 2t and then so that radius let it be r dash which is equals to r by 2 done Chal. so what's the power radiated p dash you know the simple concept so the p dash by p is equals to so as it is a spherical body so here the area will become so 4 pi r square right so let the area here a dash which will become 4 pi is a constant in place of r dash i can write r by 2 whole square yes or no 4 pi r dash square so in place of r dash you can write r by 2 whole square so p dash by p which is equals to sigma so the first area the first one area is 4 pi r square into so the temperature so t to the power 4 which is 500 to the power 4 the temperature of the first one is 
or else let's write simply do this way we know we need not to substitute the values also so the first one sigma into 4 pi so this is r by 2 whole square p dash first we wrote right so r by 2 whole square 4 pi r square into what's a sigma a t so the t to the power 4 what is the t to the power 4 so 2t whole to the power 4 so by sigma into 4 pi into so the second one this one r square for the p respective 4 pi r square into so what's the temperature here let the temperature be t so t to the power 4 that's it so now sigma sigma cancel 4 pi 4 pi gets cancelled so then what is left here so we can write so r square by 4 so let's do stepwise 2 to the power 4 which is 16 into t to the power 4 by so i can write here r square into t to the power 4 so which i can write it as so r square into 16 into t to the power 4 by so r square into t to the power 4 into the denominator we can write 4 here 4 we can bring it to the denominator part right so then uh, simplify r square r square cancel t to the power 4 t to the power 4 cancel so 4 ones are 4 fours are so that means p dash by p is equals to we got four times that's it so what's the initial one 450 they gave so p dash is equals to 4 into p so what is 4 into 450 so which is nothing but 1600 plus 200 1800 watts so the correct answer will be 1800 watt so 1800 option 4 is the correct one guys done clear everyone Chal. so let's move further so when the surrounding temperature is given so till now for a black body so the temperature of the black body is t see here so t is the temperature of black body t is the temperature of black body and then so let's say that t naught is the surrounding temperature so the t naught is the temperature of surroundings temperature of surroundings so then the power absorbed the power absorption takes place and power radiation takes place so net will be the radiated only so the power radiated so the power radiated so which is nothing but sigma a t to the power 4 the power radiated by the black body so sigma a t to the power 4 the temperature of the black body so now as the outside temperature is there so the black body absorbs the radiation also right yes so the power absorbed the power absorbed will be equals to sigma a t to the power t naught to the power 4 yes so but overall so overall the net power radiation takes place net power radiation takes place done so that means the body absorbs as well as radiates but overall what happens the radiation only will be more because the temperature of the black body is more than the surroundings temperature so the t is greater than t naught done so now the net power radiated is equals to net power radiated is equals to so power radiated minus the power absorbed power radiated minus so the power absorbed done Chalo. so you can substitute the values now so power radiated what's that sigma a t to the power 4 minus power absorbed sigma a t naught to the power 4 so sigma a take it out so t to the power 4 minus t naught to the power 4 that's it so this is a net power radiated p net understood everyone clear Achha. so let's move further so i'll give these questions as a homework just simple concepts so take it as a homework one take this as a homework too if you are not getting i will tell it in the next class so so then i will not 
using v hints displacement law i'll use i'll we'll discuss it in the next session remaining concept chalo so that's it guys two questions i gave it as a homework and dimensional formulas also i gave it as a homework so you guys you guys should try it on your own so for thermal properties of matter we are going to extend one more lecture so where we discuss so the newton's law of cooling in the next session so chalo guys that's it from my end for today's session so we'll meet in the next session with another interesting concept so till then keep studying all the very best bye